everyone, welcome back to the Chelsea's Sweets Kitchen. Today we're going to be making a magical unicorn cake. And normally when I'm making a new cake, I like to kind of envision how I want the cake to turn out, and then I like to draw a little sketch. And today I'm going to share that part of the process with you. So I have here a brand new table with a Formica writable surface in the Imagigrid pattern. And you can literally draw directly on it with dry erase markers. You can doodle whatever you want. And it also cleans up nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you can see exactly how this sketch turns out, and then we'll get started assembling the cake. So as you can see, the Imagigrid surface is perfect for sketching. You can easily make your lines, and having this cake come together is a breeze. We're then going to be making some fondant accents for the ears and the horn. We're going to be using a little bit of black frosting to make some fun little eyes for our unicorn. Some cute eyelashes. And last but not least, we're going to be making a bunch of colorful buttercream swirls. And these buttercream swirls are going to wrap around the back of the cake and around the side to be the unicorn's mane. Now that we've sketched out our cake, before we begin with the assembly of it, we need to prepare our fondant decorations. So we're going to be making a unicorn horn and cute little ears. So to make the horn, I've taken a thick dowel, which I've cut to the appropriate length. So we'll do the horn first, and we'll take a decent amount of fondant here. We'll start to work it around with our hands to get it warmed up. So we're going to go ahead and insert our skewer into the center of our horn, and then we're going to shape it. So now that our cone is nicely shaped, we're going to take a ball of our white fondant, and we're going to take some of our pink fondant, and we're going to roll these out into long, thin strips, which we're then going to wrap around this cone. So now that our horn is all shaped and is a very fun swirl pattern, we're going to set it aside to dry upright and then we're going to get going on our ears. So I've already worked with this fondant to make sure that it's nice and warmed up and we're going to go ahead and roll it out. And we want this to be pretty thick because we want it to be able to support itself well and to dry and be nice and sturdy. So we have here a template that I've cut out of cardboard and I'm going to go around. I like to use a pizza cutter. I think it helps me get really sharp lines. Um, and is my favorite tool to use when I'm cutting fondant. So just trace right around and get the base there. You can kind of gently lift it up off your surface if you don't want to reshape it too much. And then I like to push in in case there's any extra little bits that may have escaped you. And then I'm going to set this here for now and we're going to go ahead and re-roll out our fondant and cut out our second ear. Now we're going to use the smaller template that we cut out. So now that this center is ready, we're going to take our paintbrush and we're going to add just a teensy bit of moisture to the back of this and that's going to help uh, form a bond between the pink fondant and the white fondant. So you can see I'm just putting on hardly any at all. So now that our ears are fully shaped, we're going to take two toothpicks and we're going to insert them into our ears so that way once they're dry, we can easily put them onto our cake. Perfect. So now we're going to set these aside to dry on some parchment paper and we're going to start assembling our cake. So now that we have all of our fondant accents ready to go, it's time to assemble our cake. And I've taken my favorite vanilla cake base and I've colored it four different colors. To kind of stick with the unicorn theme, I've made one layer pink, one layer purple, one blue, and one yellow. So we're going to go ahead and stack these and put a nice slather of American buttercream between each layer and we're then going to apply a crumb coat. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. So we're going to begin by putting a dollop of buttercream on our cake base here, and that will help our first cake layer stick to our cake base. We're going to begin with our blue cake layer, which we're going to center here nicely, and then we're going to gently apply a nice bit of our American buttercream. So you just want to gently work it around the layer and make sure that it's nice and even. Perfect. Next we're going to stack our yellow cake layer. An important trick to not getting crumbs in your buttercream is to never touch through the buttercream onto your cake. So just push really lightly as you're applying that frosting and just gently smear it. Next we're going to put on our pink cake layer. We're then going to set our last layer on top and we're going to flip it upside down. And by flipping it upside down it allows us to be able to get a smoother top because we know that the bottom of our cake layer is nice and smooth from baking against the pan. 
So we're just going to press this down lightly to make sure there's no air bubbles. And then we're going to go ahead and apply our crumb coat. So we're going to start with a lot of frosting on the top of our cake and then we're going to gently work our way down. Now that we've applied our frosting, I'm just going to smooth it out with our cake bench and then I'm going to put it in the fridge to chill. So now that our crumb coat is nicely chilled, it's time to apply a second layer of buttercream. And we're going to do the same process as before. We're going to work our way down the cake and then smooth with our cake bench. We're now going to smooth out our frosting again. We're going to do this by applying an even amount of pressure with our cake bench and trying to make nice, long, and smooth strokes. So you can see there's a lot of excess frosting coming off here, so don't worry if as you're frosting your cake, uh, you think you're using too much because a lot of it does come off while you're smoothing. We have all of our frostings ready to match the colors of our cake layers. So I'm going to go ahead and first insert the ears and then insert the horn. Now that we have our ears and our horn on, it's time to make the mane of the unicorn. We're going to start off using our Wilton 1M tip making some big swirls all around. We filled in mostly with our pink buttercream. We're going to start putting on our other colors. Next we need to make our unicorn's eyes and in order to do that we're going to first make an impression with a circle cookie cutter just to make a half circle and then we're going to outline it with some black frosting. So I'm going to go ahead and line these up and I think right about there is great. So I'm just going to gently press it in to get that half circle and now it's easy to make symmetrical eyes. So I have here some edible glitter dust and I'm going to take a paintbrush and I'm going to gently dip it in and then I'm just going to tap it and that helps you control how much glitter is going onto the cake because a little bit goes a long way. And just like that, our magical unicorn cake is complete. Thank you so much for joining me today. To see the recipe for this cake, you can check out the comment box below and it's also up on shellsweets.com. You can also see more of my creations on Instagram at Shell Sweets. Thank you again for Microgroup for this beautiful writable surface. And without further ado, let's cut into this cake.